Vicks presents the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory. Vicks, the makers of Vicks Vapor Rub, Vicks Vatronol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler, brings you the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory. Today, due to the overwhelming number of requests, we bring you one of the great romantic classics of the American theater, Smiling Through. Now here's a good thing to remember when you catch a cold. The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds is Vicks VapoRub. Our play, Smiling Through, opens in a beautiful English garden where John Carteret and his next-door neighbor and lifelong friend, Dr. Owen Harding, are seated at a small table playing dominoes. Dr. Owen is studying his next move, and John Carteret has dozed off. Owen selects a domino, plays, and looks up triumphantly, only to find his opponent asleep. He picks up his cane and nudges John with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, what's the matter? What is it? Uh, oh, 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 my turn. Uh, this is the devil of an exciting game of dominoes with you going to sleep after every move. Sorry, Owen. Uh, where's Kathleen? My niece went over for some socks for Bobby Datchett. He's leaving tonight for France, you know. Pity a boy like that has to go when there are worthless young men about like, well, I'll not mention any names. I suppose you mean Kenneth Wayne. I don't know why he couldn't have stayed in America with his mother's family. Why he had to come back here stirring up unpleasant memories for other people. Well, it's only natural that the boy should want to come back and take care of his father's property. He was going to the dogs, you know, and after all, it's been... Good Lord, John, how many years is it since Jeremiah Wayne disappeared? 30, the 18th of June. Blast it, Owen. I don't want to hear any more about Jeremiah Wayne or his son. It's a subject I finished with 30 years ago, and I don't want it reopened. Uh, the subject may be reopened in spite of you, John. And why not? After all, the boy is not responsible for what his father did. And I think Kathleen is very fond of him. Very fond indeed. Rubbish. Kathleen knows I don't like him or his name. Does she know why? No. But she'll never disobey me. Uh, she's Irish, John. Mm hmm. No, 30 years is a long time to hold a hatred. Young Wayne is lonely. People around here can't forget what his father did, but, you know, he doesn't even know what it's all about. He's proud. He feels it. I'm surprised he stayed here as long as he has. John, be fair. Fair? He's the son of the man who was responsible for the greatest sorrow I ever felt, and you know it. He's his son, his own son. You were here. You saw what happened to her. And you've seen me live on here for 30 years without her, and you dare to... dare to talk to me about his son courting my Kathleen. Do you think any of those things would stop Kathleen from being in love with him? Kathleen's not to be in love with him. I won't have it. I won't have it! Kathleen, I think you must be the most beautiful girl in all the world. <laughs> Now, if that's what you're thinking, I'll never be the one to disillusion you, Kenneth Wayne. Oh, the sun's going down. I suppose we'd better be starting home. Oh, Kathleen, I'm going to miss you. Miss me? Mm -hmm. I'll be leaving Dunstable sometime this week, Kathleen. I'm going to Salisbury to join up. Oh, it's the war, is it? Well, yes. Well, sure, and I thought for a minute you were going to get married or something. <laughs> oh, if I meant to get married, I wouldn't be going away to do it. No. Oh, no. Dunstable would be good enough for me. Well, of course, there's many a good-looking girl in Dunstable. And if you're thinking of proposing to any of them, I'll tell you my idea of a proposal. I'd be very interested to hear it. Well, the young man would first have to ascertain that his intentions were not uh, entirely disagreeable to me. Oh, of course. And then, choosing a suitable sort of a place in a garden or, or on a country road like this, he should say... It has long been my intention to ask a question of you. That sounds like a very good beginning. Then I would say, dear me, how interesting, what can it be? And then he should gently take my hand and, and say in a tone which trembled with the force of his feelings, Miss Dungannon, 
Kathleen. May I call you Kathleen? Now, that's how a proper proposal should start. I read it in a book. In a book? Yes, and... Oh, my goodness, look, we're home already. Ah, home. So we are. Well, before I go in, wouldn't you like to try what I've been telling you? Hmm? Just to see how it sounds. <laughs> how does it begin again? It has long been my intention to... Go on, get on with it now. Oh, yes. It has long been my intention to... Kathleen! Kathleen! What are you doing out here on the road? Good evening, Mr. Carter. Good evening, Mr. Wayne. I'm sorry to see, Kathleen, that you have a painfully short memory. Uh, Uncle John, dear, would you believe it now? I clean forgot what you told me about seeing Mr. Wayne. Very likely. Will you be good enough to leave us, Mr. Wayne? I'm sorry to be inhospitable, but you will please understand clearly, once and for all, that you're not welcome here. Uncle John... Mr. Carter... I hope someday to ask Kathleen to marry me. And if he does, I'll accept him. Mr. Mr. Wayne, please let it be clearly understood once and for all that there can be no question of marriage between you and Kathleen. I absolutely forbid you to see her again. Mr. Carteret, it's only fair then to tell you, sir, that I shall see her without your permission. I love Kathleen and she loves me. Oh, I do. You're going I to do. find it very difficult to keep us apart. Because I'm coming back from the war and I'm going to marry her. With your consent or without it. Good night, sir. <laughs> Kathleen. <laughs> Why, Kathleen, child, what are you doing out here in the garden crying? <laughs> Come here to me. Let me put my arm around you. Don't you touch me. Kathleen. I love him. What right do you have to interfere because of some quarrel you had with his father? Kathleen, I I think it's time you knew the truth about the man whose son you say you love. Perhaps I should have told you long ago, but I didn't dream you would ever meet a Wayne, much less love one. Am I disturbing something, John? I heard your voices from my porch. No, and I'm glad you're here. I think Kathleen should know what happened in this garden 30 years ago. You were here that night, and you can bear me out. Sit down, Owen. Thank you. Kathleen, my dear, 30 years ago on the 8th, 18th of June, this old house was a hubbub of excitement. It was a lovely summer night like this. Over the gate yonder, the honeysuckle and roses grew just as they do tonight. Everything was much the same except for some Chinese lanterns placed here and there. For it was the night Moon Yin and I were to be married. She arrived that day with her sister Mary, your mother, my dear. Oh, I wish I could have been here. As the long twilight faded into darkness. The old house was lit by a thousand candles. Snatches of laughter and gay chatter floated into the garden, and someone was playing something soft and liquid on the harp. Ah, I can hear it still. It was her song. She brought it to me from Ireland as a wedding present, she said. How clearly it all comes back. There was an hour yet before the ceremony, and suddenly there was a violent thing at the gate bell, and <laughs> you know who stood there, jangling it as though he wanted to wake the dead? No. Who? <laughs> Dr. Owen. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, sir, Dr. Owen, 30 years younger and 30 years less handsome. For heaven's sake, stop jangling the bell. I'm coming. Hello, Owen. Why do you have this gate locked when there's a wedding thing on? Keep out unwelcome guests. Uh, can you tie a bow tie? My hands are shaking so that I can't manage it. <laughs> what are you nervous about? You aren't getting married. Here, come into the house. Now I'll tie it for you. I, if I live through this, I'll take a solemn oath never to go near another wedding again. Much less be best man. Oh, good Lord, I've lost it. You've lost what? The ring. The ring. Now what am I going to do? What the devil do you mean getting married <laughs> there's, anyway? There's the ring on your finger. What? On, on, on whose finger? On yours, on your little finger. What the devil do you mean wearing Moon Yin's ring? Put it back in your waistcoat pocket. Well, it won't stay there. I'll be bound to lose it. Oh, thunderation. Now what? It slipped down into the lining of my pocket. Uh -huh. Must be a hole there somewhere. Now I'll have to find a maid and get her to fish it out. If you lose that wedding ring, I'll hang you up by your thumb. Oh, well, I'll find it. I'll find it. Don't, don't get rattled now. I'll find it. Oh, uh, John. Yeah? Uh, I, I knew I had something to tell you. Well? Uh, I, I went into the dragon on my way here to get a little something, uh, something to steady my nerves, you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, Wayne was there, drinking more than was good for him and talking about Munin. And I was wondering, did you ask him to the wedding? Of course not. Well, I wonder if that was wise. 
Wayne has a strange and bitter nature. No, I, I know how you feel about him, and I don't blame you. But Wayne was in an ugly mood and making pretty wild threats. Threats? Yes. He was muttering around that there was still time, that the wedding wasn't over yet. At first, I thought I wouldn't tell well, you, I'm but... glad you did. It's always better to be forewarned, and if it becomes necessary, I'll have to deal with him. That kind of a man usually takes doubt in talking. Oh, well, I'm not worried about Wayne. Are you? Well, yes, I am, Owen. There's no use denying it. My reason tells me there's no way he can harm us now, and yet I am a little worried. Well, there's more guests arriving. Come along. Let's go into the study and talk it over. Right, sir. Will you answer the front door, Ellen? Yes, Mr. John. Right away, sir. Right, thank you. Hello, Helen. Oh, it's you, Mr. Wayne. Uh, Who is it you want, sir? We're very busy just now. I want to come in. I want to kiss the bride. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I can't admit you, sir. Get out of the way, Helen. I tell you, I've come to kiss the bride. <laughs> In just a moment, we will bring you the second act of Smilin' Through, starring Victor Jory. In many a home today, children are sitting around feeling miserable because of a pesky cold. Now, if this means your home, Mother, why not take a tip from millions of thankful women and rub Vicks Vapor Rub on throat, chest, and back? Yes, it's the modern way most mothers use to relieve distress of children's colds. You see, the very moment you rub it on... Vapor Rub's relief giving action starts right to work, and its comforting double action keeps on working for hours to help relieve congestion and irritation in the upper breathing passages, the coughing spasms, sore throat, and that muscular soreness or tightness. And results are so fine because Vapor Rub penetrates, penetrates into the cold, congested upper bronchial tubes with its special, soothing, medicinal vapors. And at the same time, it stimulates stimulates chest and back surfaces like a comforting warming poultice. So, Mother, when your child comes down with a cold, do this without delay. Rub on Vapor Rub, because only Vapor Rub gives you this special penetrating, stimulating action. Remember, it's the best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds. Vicks Vapor Rub. <laughs> the second act of Smiling Through, starring Victor Jory as John Carteret. As we pick up the story, John Carteret is continuing with the story of his romance, Moonyin Claire, which he's telling to his niece Kathleen, to show why he's insisted she and Kenneth Wayne must never marry. Well, I wish you could have seen Moonyin that day in her wedding dress. She was too beautiful to be real. Too beautiful for anyone but an angel. I was in the study when Jeremiah Wayne came to the house, but I later learned from Ellen how Wayne stood there in the doorway, clenching and unclenching his fists, and how Moonyin heard him talking and came up and smiled at him and invited him into the morning room. Oh, Jerry, it was nice of you to come around. I knew you'd never let me get married without wishing me well. You're not going to marry him. It isn't true. I don't believe it. I won't believe it. You couldn't marry him, knowing how I love you. Oh, now, Jerry, you mustn't begin this all over again. Don't look at me like that as if you hated me. I love you. I'm dying inside for love of you, Mooney and Claire. Do you think I can feel this way and stand aside while you marry another yes, man? Yes, you can, because you must. No, oh, no. He's not going to have you, not if I can prevent it. Jerry, listen to me. Do you know what you're going to do to prove your love for me? You're going to leave me now, bravely and wishing me joy. And you're going to go along home and let me be married to the man I love. Because you love me. Oh, sure, and it's a dog's life. I'd be leading you, Jerry, not loving you. And you don't deserve that. Money. Oh, money. Goodbye, Jerry. God keep you. I came for a kiss from the bride. All right. You shall have it. Money. Now, please go. All right. I'll go. I'll go. Oh, 
Who was that in here with you? Just an old friend, John. Ah. Oh. oh, how beautiful you are. And what a lucky man I am. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty lucky myself. My darling. Oh, my. Hold me close. Don't let me go. I feel safe when I'm in your arms. Say, I... I think we've broken a few of the rules. I'm not supposed to see you in that wedding dress till we meet at the altar. <laughs> I know. Are you sorry? Oh, sorry. No, no, no. You're so beautiful, Munin. You're so beautiful. Oh, so here you are. John, I wish you'd pay some attention to your own wedding. The wire broke that held the big bell of uh, lilies of the valley and it fell on the parson and almost smothered him. <laughs> we had to give him smelling salt. Oh, good, that's why we picked you for the best man. Oh. You're doing very well. <laughs> Come on, Moonine, let's go out in the garden. Oh, by the way, Owen, you haven't lost the ring yet, have you? No, no, Ellen sewed it in my waistcoat pocket. <laughs> safe this time. <laughs> she did, huh? Well, be sure and bring a pair of scissors to the altar with you. Yeah. Come on, darling, we'll leave Owen out to fret it out alone. Love, weddings, rings. What a lot of trouble to get into trouble. Will you be cold out here in the garden? Oh, no. No? Eh, what are you thinking? I was thinking about how we met. I asked you to marry me that very first day, and you said yes. Oh, not the first day. I didn't. Well, very soon after then. Much too soon to be modest. <laughs> I thought at the time, say, do you realize I asked you to marry me without even knowing what your name was? Oh, I didn't know yours either. I looked at you, and my heart absolutely stopped for a moment, and I said to myself, oh, there she is. There's the girl I've been waiting for. I'd know her anywhere. What did you think? I thought, what an overbearing, arrogant young man. I don't think much of him. Well, if that's the case, I'm going straight into the house and stop the oh, wedding. No, no, I take it back. Oh, what did you think? I must have thought I found my happiness now. Because that's what I've been thinking ever since. Darling. Oh, John. Do you suppose anyone else in the world ever felt like this before? Never, never. Nothing's ever going to separate us, Munin. Not life or death or heaven or hell. No. Even if I died, I think I'd find my way back to you, John. I'd be so lonely for you. Oh, my darling. Jerry! What do you want, Wayne? I've had all I can stand. Take your hands off. Why, oh, I... Jerry, you said you'd go. I couldn't, Munin. I've been out here all the time. Now, please go into the house, Munin. I want to talk to Carter alone. Oh, Jerry, you promised me. Send her away, Carter. I think perhaps you'd better, Munin. No, I won't leave. Please do as I ask, Munin. Not until I know what he wants. If you've come here to create a disturbance at the wedding... There isn't going to be any wedding. That's threats like that won't do you any good, Wayne. You've been behaving like a madman ever since we announced the marriage. Now get out of here and don't come back. I tell you, there isn't going to be any wedding. I wasn't able to keep you from winning her, but by all that's holy, I can keep you from marrying You fool, put that gun away. No, no, John. <laughs> Munin. Oh, John. Dear God, I never meant that. Dear God, I never meant that. Owen! Owen, somebody call Dr. Owen. What's happened, Mr. John? It was Wayne. He shot at me. Munin stepped in front of me, and he, he ran out the gate and... Send someone. Owen! What is it, John? Je Owen. Oh, John. Here, let, let me look at her. Oh, dirty blackguard. Ellen! Send someone after Wayne. Don't let him get away. Yes, sir. I'll send some of the men. Uh, lie still. Munin. John? Owen's here, darling. He knows what to do. He'll, he'll take care of you. Funny. I... I said... Even if I died. That's funny when you think of it. Like a warning. Oh, and if you're my friend, help her. Help her now. John, I'm afraid it's... I'm, I'm afraid there's nothing that I can do. No, 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 that's not possible. It can't happen. I... But it has... John, John, my darling, I love you. That's all that counts. I will love you until the end of time. Bon Jean. John, where is my ring? My wedding ring? Oh, here it is. Put it on my finger, John. Yes, dear. Listen. They're playing my song. They don't know I won't be needing it tonight. There's a little 
green gate at whose trellis I wait while two eyes of blue come smiling through me. Monique. Oh, dear God. Well, that's all the story there is to tell, Kathleen. Now you know why I've hated Jeremiah Wayne all these years. Love like that, Kathleen, is like the smile of God. And when it's taken from you, it's as though God had stopped smiling. Uncle, dear, if you could love like that, through the years and after the years, and after death itself, how is it you can be so hard about me and my poor little love story? Because you're the stock of Munin herself. And he's the blood of the Waynes, and you don't belong together. Don't be hard-headed, John. I love him. You'll have to get over loving him. I won't. I won't. You're an obstinate old man, John Cartridge, and I'm not going to listen to you. Ken and I have just as much right to fall in love and be married as you and Munin. You have no right to inflict your quarrels and your anger and grief on us. This is our lifetime, not yours. And I'm not going to let you spoil it. I'm going to Ken and I'm never coming back again. Go in the house and stop her, John. Don't let her get away. Maybe I am an obstinate old man. Maybe I haven't any... Right to interfere. Well, at last. You go and get Kathleen, and I'll go over to my house and get Ken. Ken? At your house? Uh, yes, he's staying with me until uh, he leaves for overseas. Why, you... You old hypocrite. You never told me that. Well, I, I never had the nerve. Go get Kathleen, John. Hurry before she gets away. <laughs> Go on, go on, Ken. Speak your piece. Just go on, boy. If you'd both keep still, I think we could manage all right. <laughs> go on, Ken. <laughs> well, let me see. How did it begin? It, it has long been my intention. Oh, oh, yeah. Darling, it has long been my intention to ask a question of you. Dear me, how interesting. What can it be? Miss Dungannon, Kathleen. May I call you Kathleen? Hey, hey, that's all she taught me. <laughs> now what do I say? <laughs> well, what does he say? You're the only one around here that's ever proposed to anyone, John. <laughs> he says, Kathleen, I'm not half worthy of you, but I'll try very hard to make you happy. Kathleen, I will try very hard. And then he says... I, I think I can carry on from here on my own, Mr. Carter. <laughs> Kathleen, my darling, will you marry me? Oh, Thank you so much. I'd love to. Well, well, now we're getting somewhere. John, it was a fine thing you did tonight. And believe me, I know what it cost you. We'll um, have the wedding here in this garden. It will help keep out the stain. Uh, would you like a game of dominoes? Dominoes? No, I'm tired, Owen. I think I'll just sit here a little while and then I'll turn in. Uh, good night, Owen. A good night, John. I'll see you tomorrow. Hello, John. Monin. Monin, you know you seem very close to me tonight. Closer than you've seen since you left me. I am close. We're together again, my darling. You have only to reach out your arms and take me in them. I'm glad about Kathleen and Ken. They're going to be very happy. We're... 
together again. Yes. Don't you see me, John? Yes. Yes, I do. Why, you're... You're wearing your wedding dress. Of course, John. Just as you were that night. And as beautiful and fresh and young as if 30 years were only a day. Give me your hand, my darling. Come. We'll walk through the gate together. Oh, Monique. I've waited so long. I've waited so long. Come, my dear. Monique, look. Who's that old man sitting back there in my chair? It's you, John. Me? <laughs> this is what they call dying? Yes. Oh, John, isn't it glorious? And isn't it stupid to be afraid of it? Afraid? Some poor dears are. But they would go smiling through the years if they knew what they would find at the end of the road. In just a moment, a word from Victor Jory. These days, when we expect lots of things we buy to be different, not as good as they were, it's nice to know there are no wartime substitutes in good old Vicks VapoRub. The VapoRub you buy today is the same expert formula, the very same effective quality you enjoyed before the war. To keep faith with the millions of families who rely on VapoRub, we combed and scoured the free countries of the world for the essential aromatics and medications that make VapoRub so effective. We were successful. And so, my friends, there are no wartime substitutes in VapoRub. It's the same family standby that has become the best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds. Time-tested, home-proved Vicks VapoRub. <laughs> Victor Jory. Our play next week is based on the famous story for which we received so many requests in recent weeks. Daphne du Maurier's brilliant and unforgettable Rebecca. And now, Mr. Gable has a word for you. Folks, do you know that every time you spend an extra dollar these days, a dollar for something you don't absolutely need, that you're simply helping to make prices go up on all the things you're going to need? Yes, that's exactly what happens, and that is what is called inflation. So don't penalize yourself by helping to force up prices. We can keep prices where they belong and incidentally help the war effort no end by doing these three things. Buy only what you need and pay no more than ceiling prices. Pay your ration points in full and put your extra dollars into war bonds. <laughs> Our production today was based on the famous Jane Cowles' success, Smile and Through, and was adapted by Gene Holloway, directed by Richard Sandville. Music for this series is under the direction of Mark Warno. Be sure to be with us next week when Vicks, the makers of Vicks VapoRub, Vicks Vatronol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler, brings you the matinee theater production of Rebecca. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.